What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So I'm gonna check out WWE should build the future around these five super superstars, and two, they shouldn't. I'm very interested to see who he has on this list on who should be built up and who shouldn't be built up for WWE going forward. Um, right now, WWE is there in a boom period. A lot of people are watching the content. A lot of people are enjoying what WWE is putting out. Um on either the weekly shows or definitely the PLEs. And, you know, they have, they're in a good situation right now from the people that they've drafted from NXT to really, you know, carry the company forward when the people that we grew up watching, like the Seth Rollins of the world, the Roman Reigns of the world, the Randy Orton's of the world, when they finally take a step back or start, you know, pulling back on being on the shows and being prominently featured the people that they're building up now will already be established names and that's what you want to do so we're going to see who does he feel like it's going to be the future for wwe appreciate all love and support let's get right into this one man in this video i'm sharing my picks for the superstars wwe should focus on as the future of the business Today, we're just going to focus on the male side of the roster. Some of these wrestlers are already on the brink of greatness, while others are still climbing the ladder, but show huge potential. At the end of the video, I'll also mention two wrestlers who are often said to be the future of the business that I personally disagree with, and leave a okay. comment with who you think should be given a big push over the next few years. I was impressed with Bron Breaker from the moment he first appeared in he WWE. Definitely should be on his Even list. before I knew anything about him, he had my attention with those awesome power moves, that stiff looking clothesline, his scoop power slam, <laughs> the overhead belly to belly suplex, and of course, the Frankensteiner. Yep. We all know that that one runs in his family. Mm -hmm. Speaking of his family, I think he would have been better off taking the Steiner surname. I have to admit, Bron Breaker's a pretty bad name. We all know the heritage of his family, and the fact that he looks so much like his dad and uncle, it was a big misstep by renaming him, in my opinion. I personally don't have a problem with Bron Breaker, and I think they, they kind of wanted to acknowledge his past like his lineage but to have him be his own man like have his own kind of i you know legacy in a sense or you know where people see braun breaker yeah they know his father and his uncle but he's his own man i'm, I'm okay with braun breaker because he's bre he breaks people <laughs> legitimately so I'm, I'm okay with the name He's so explosive in the ring, and that does remind me a lot of Scott Steiner, especially when he was in his prime back in the mid-90s. He was called up to the main roster recently, and he's been on an absolute tear as a heel ever mm -hmm. since he arrived. He feels genuinely threatening, a really believable heel. But I could also see him being a great babyface in the future as well. Mm -hmm. He actually managed to make his NXT tag team partner in Baron Corbin, look entertaining and Corbin is not a man that I'm usually entertained by. Break has got that magic combination of size, strength, ability and charisma. His promos are intense and really believable mm -hmm. and I genuinely believe he would tear my head off given <laughs> the opportunity. He 100% could be the next big thing in WWE. I honestly thought that Gunther... Hey, man, they're, they're, they're booking him like the next big thing. If you guys saw Monday Night Raw, he uh, packed up Ricochet. I think that was the last time we're going to see Ricochet on a WWE television show. Um, There's a good chance he would probably end up going to AEW. And Ricochet did his job of putting him over, but he is on a rampage. What they're doing with Braun Breaker is very, very good. They are making you buy into the fact that this guy is him it's we we're not too far from him being a world champion it's gonna take some time but he can i don't think anyone would complain if they keep booking him like this give him some good feuds give him some good matches it's only a matter of time before we get him as a world heavyweight champion or the wwe champion it's it's there would end up getting buried in WWE. When he signed with them back in 2019, 
I had absolutely no faith that they'd know how to use him properly. Same but here. they've totally proved me wrong, and the man himself has been incredible this entire time. Mm -hmm. Gunther's been in WWE now for over five years, from NXT UK all the way to the main roster. He's provided. My concern was them ruining him on the main roster, and they haven't done it. They, oh my god, they've done so great by him. It's fantastic. He did consistently jaw-dropping performances. The quality of his in-ring work is just awesome. And he's one of those wrestlers who automatically elevates anyone else he's in the ring mm -hmm. with. For example, his match with Sheamus at Clash at the Castle 2022 was one of my favourite matches of the entire year. Mm -hmm. And Sheamus has never been a wrestler that I personally rate but that match was exceptional. Great what match. makes Gunther so good though, apart from his in-ring ability? Well, he's a believable, no-nonsense, imposing heel. Also, yeah, he don't he he's a heel that legitimately can kick the shit out of you. You can buy into him being this dominant force and he doesn't need to cheat to win. He can just beat you just off his strength alone. He doesn't need to cheat to win. Simple. He doesn't need to. That's how good he is. He's fucking fantastic, and he's putting on great matches. You can't deny that Imperium have one of the sickest entrances in the business. But most importantly, Gunther can adapt to working with anyone, mm -hmm. and I think that's an underrated quality for a main event heel. They've obviously got a lot of faith in him after his incredible intercontinental title reign, and now he's king of the ring too. It looks like Gunther is poised for greatness in the next couple of years, and I'm looking forward to him winning his first world championship. Yep, SummerSlam, go ahead, put the title on him. Yeah. Who's going to complain? I'm dead ass. Who's going to complain? Nobody. Put the title on him. Let's get it going. Let's get the, the reign of Gunther as the world heavyweight champion. Let's get it going, bro. Let's get it going. For Otis, his journey in WWE has been a rocky one. And I think the guy is massively underrated. Mm -hmm. He first appeared in NXT alongside Tucker Knight as heavy machinery. And man, did he catch my attention yeah. with those power moves. Even in that tag team, it was clear that he was the real star. I've been a fan of big dudes with power moves ever since I first saw Vader, so naturally, I'm a big fan of Otis too. When he came up to the main roster, things were pretty steady for a while. His storyline with Mandy Rose mm -hmm. kept him in the spotlight. Then came that unexpected win at Money in the Bank, which yeah. seemed to set up a major push for him. But then he lost the briefcase to The Miz, and that seemed to put a stop to his momentum. Yeah. And then they started booking him as a comedy character. He was obviously a victim to Vince's brain-dead booking decisions in 2020, mm -hmm. and since then he's been in Alpha Academy with Chad Gable, which has had its moments. But honestly, I find this kind of comedy to be really cringe. And it's a shame because Otis is hugely charismatic and he's got a really down-to-earth and relatable persona that seems to be genuine and the fans seem to really love him too. Otis deserves to be treated so much better. I think he has the potential to be a great, sympathetic babyface in WWE. It looks like they're teasing a split between the Alpha mm -hmm. Academy right now and once Otis has done beating the snot out of Gable, I want to see him getting a big push on his own. And I the think we're, 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 we're right there. We're right there. They're doing this perfectly. I do think at Clash at the Castle this weekend, he's going to finally turn on him. And he's going to be the reason why Goon, uh, Chad doesn't become the Intercontinental Champion. And I think we're going to get a push with that. We're getting Otis Chance in 2024. They have something here. And with Heel Gable, this could definitely work. So, they, they have something here. There are some wrestlers who make suspending your disbelief really easy. And Ilya Dragunov mm -hmm. is one of them. His wrestling is incredibly tight. Yeah. Nobody in WWE is as good at making me believe that what I'm watching is real. Yeah. I said earlier that Gunther has the ability to elevate anyone that he's in the ring with, and that's exactly the case with Dragunov too. 
In fact, these two had absolutely barn-burning matches against Facts. each other in NXT UK, Classic and it would be matches, great to bro. see them wrestle again Can't on an wait. even bigger stage. Can't fucking if wait. you're on the fence about Dragunov and how far he can <laughs> go, then check out those matches and the matches he had against Dijak mm -hmm. in NXT, Fantastic. and more recently, his matches against Ricochet on Raw. That believability that I spoke about earlier also extends to Dragunov's character. I think his promos are so intense, and I believe everything that he says. For me, he's got the complete package of charisma, in-ring skill, and a compelling character. And, and his intensity, bro. He goes... The workouts that he be posting, the, the intensity in his promos, the intensity in his facial expressions in the ring... He is a scrappy guy that will literally tear you apart. He will break you in multiple ways. And it's fantastic. Because with wrestling, you got to, with the smaller guys, you, they have to have something that sets them apart to make them believable. Remember, um, you know, Brian Danielson. Oh, I mean, Daniel Bryan, however you want to say it. What made him work as a smaller guy is because of his in-ring technical ability. Him being able to fold you up in any type of way and make you submit. Him being able to out-wrestle you. That was his strength. That's what people could get behind. I can get behind him having a match with Brock Lesnar, which was one of the better matches that year. If y'all remember, Brock Lesnar versus uh, um, Brian Danielson or Daniel Bryan. And... You trying to figure out how can you make that work? You can make it work because of his speed, his wrestling ability. It's fantastic. That's that's who Ilya reminds me of in the sense of his stature, but he's so intense. It works, bro. Definitely can't wait to see him and Gunther feud. Oh, bro. Really hope that they push him to the moon over the next few years. Dragunov also had an amazing feud with Carmelo Hayes back mm -hmm. in 2023, where they had a trilogy of matches that were absolute fire. And that was as much to do with Carmelo Hayes as it was Dragunov. Since his debut, Melo has consistently proven his star power. His run in NXT was phenomenal, mm -hmm. where he became the NXT champion and a two-time North American champion. His main event matches in NXT have proven that he can shine in huge match situations. Melo came up to the main roster very recently in the draft, and the fact that he was booked to face Cody Rhodes immediately yeah. speaks volumes about WWE's faith in him. I have heard some concerns about his size, but mm -hmm. I don't think that will be a problem in modern day WWE. Under Vince McMahon, his size might have been a disadvantage, but I think Triple H is more focused on in-ring talent. Yeah. And I'll tell you what Vince did used to appreciate. And that's someone who could cut a convincing promo. Melo turned heel earlier this year. So good. And he instantly proved that he can play either side of the coin brilliantly. He makes a good babyface and a really good heel too. Melo's charisma is undeniable. He looks like a superstar. And I think he could go all the way to the top in wwe oh uh, definitely you know it's gonna take some time with him he gotta get a little bit more comfortable he had a little slip up with his promo with la Knight, but um i think he it's gonna take some time it's gonna take some time he i think he, I'm, I'm willing to give him a chance i'm i wanting to see him succeed and uh you know he, once he gets a little bit more comfortable on the main roster I, I think he he's gonna be in a very good spot they're presenting him as this cocky know-it-all rookie and it works. You need that. And honestly, you know, I, I want to see how they continue to push that. Because right now, I think he's in the he's in the right direction. And I love the fact that they are they're utilizing him and having him go against some top top guys right now. So, so they're my picks for who I think WWE should be betting on for the future of the business. As promised, I wanted to just mention a couple of players who I think should be demoted rather than pushed. Austin Theory is the first person Damn. I'd like to mention. He was getting a big push at one time, and by that I mean he was getting pushed down our throats. To me, Theory doesn't look like the future of WWE. He's got a really bland presentation, 
I heard somebody say that it's like he's an actor playing a wrestler, and that really sums him up in my opinion. He doesn't have the kind of charisma to truly connect with fans, and I find him to be very generic, from his wrestling style to his promos too. Vince pushed him really hard, and he had that on-screen association with Vince too, which did him absolutely no favours whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, his role in the company has been scaled right back over the last few months, so let's just hope he doesn't get another big push anytime soon. I think what they're trying to do with him now, if you guys are paying attention, is him and Grayson Waller, they're probably about to split. He probably need, He's probably going to go babyface. I want to see how he does as a babyface. And then if it doesn't work then, then I don't know what to do. But let's see how he does as a babyface. I do think he has so much potential. They just, they got to find a way to capitalize. And maybe the babyface turn will help. So we'll see. The other guy that I wanted to mention might be a little bit more controversial. And that's LA Knight. I just don't think he has enough about him to be a main eventer in WWE. I don't hate him, but I don't That's see crazy. what the fuss is all about either. I mean, people were making comparisons between him and The Rock at one point, which to me is total madness. He was given a main event push at the end of 2023, but then WWE cooled off on him. Although, to be fair, he was over with a lot of fans at the time, so it is just my opinion personally that I That's don't think crazy. he has what it takes to be a main event superstar tell me what you think of my list down in the comments and let me hey man i'm about to disagree with him hey i'm gonna respect his opinion that's his opinion i've heard a lot of people say that about la night but the guy's over he's still over he's still the guy the guy is very good with his promos it works he reminds you of that time period of you know how he delivers and says promos like he, it, it works Anytime they see LA Knight, they go crazy. No matter where he's at, they go crazy. I think him, LA Knight, Logan Paul, that's going to be a fun match, fun program, fun back and forth, SummerSlam. Let's get it going. And have LA Knight win the United States Championship. Do I think he can be a main event player? Yes, I, I believe he can because he's that over. He's that over. You put him in a situation where he can win a WWE World Heavyweight Championship or the WWE Championship, people are going to get behind that. That's just my personal opinion. I think he's he's talented, and I think he does deserve at, at least one main event title run. But it's so crazy because WWE have so many other potentials too. So, But yeah, this was an interesting list. It wasn't a bad list at all. I definitely would disagree when it comes to the LA Knight part. And I think a um, um, Austin Theory can really, I have a little bit of faith left in him. I just think they got to do something with the character change and maybe him being a baby face would possibly help. So y'all comment down below. Let me know who do y'all feel like the future of WWE is if it wasn't listed on here. And who do y'all feel like WWE should cool down on um, when it pertains to them potentially being in a main event y'all let me know down below but i appreciate all the love and support road to 150k and i'm still young speedy youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all kicking it with me see you on the next one peace